Welcome to the 2024 NHL trade deadline. The cutoff for any trade was March 8th, where lots of action among big-name players has been completed in the previous few weeks. With some teams hoping to gear up for a long run in the Stanley Cup playoffs, while others began their build for the future. Welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Brian Liver, joined alongside Chris Machado and Will Dirksen. Starting off, let's jump straight into it. Who, in your guys' mind, won this year's NHL trade deadline? Chris, we can start with you. Well, I mean, there's a bunch of winners, right? There's Florida, there's Winnipeg, there's Vegas. But for me, it's the Dallas Stars. Shout out to you, your hometown. I mean, right now, they got Chris Tanna from Calgary. And you see his stats on the board. And a lot of people think rating doesn't matter. But when you see plus 20, that tells me he's not being scored on when he's on the ice. Even as a defenseman, that line's not getting scored on. And he's able to get the puck, get those rebounds that go off in the corner off of Ottinger now. If they were Markstrom. And now, you know, sending it back up, creating alleys there for the forwards. So he's getting right there a very, very good point, uh, personal point differential. And then you call up Logan Stankoven right now from the Texas Stars, the AHA, excuse me, AHL affiliate. And right now, those are his NHL numbers. But in the AHL this season alone, 24 goals, 33 assists, and a plus nine rating. So you just got a great 34-year-old <laughs> veteran for absolutely nothing. Remember, this is a three-team trade for Tanev. Um, Calgary is retaining 50% of this contract, and then somehow the New Jersey Devils get wrapped up in this thing, and they are just <laughs> randomly paying for the other half. So you got them for free, basically. And then with Logan, another young gun, going to be phenomenal. I see what you did there, Chris, shouting out our co-host's team. I'm going to shout out Josh Bartosik's hometown team right now. The Carolina Hurricanes had themselves a deadline. They made a Category 5 move at the deadline, if you will, getting Jake Gensel from the dumpster fire that is the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, 22 goals in 50 games with Pittsburgh. And even though Gensel is not back from injury yet, he should be back fairly soon. He's going to make any line, whatever line they put him on in Carolina, he's going to make that line better. And to top it all off, they made a smaller move. We'll call it a category one, maybe category two, bringing in Evgeny Kuznetsov from Washington. Hasn't had the best season but he's older and he can play the center position. He's actually a good compliment for Jake Gensel on the wing because Kuznetsov is more of a physical player. Gensel's more of a speed player. And Kuznetsov badly wanted a fresh start. He's getting it in Carolina. Loved both the references you guys were making here and obviously amazing picks. We'll certainly be interested to see how it plays out. Now, kind of going to the other hand, we talked a little about back and forth on the line. Who did you guys think Maybe was either in the search of a rebuild or just didn't make the smartest decisions, in your opinion. Will, we can start with you on this one. Well, since you brought up teams that are talking about rebuilds, the Arizona Coyotes did not have a good trade deadline, in my opinion. The Coyotes gave away two veteran players like they were in the bargain bin for next to nothing. They got two draft picks combined for Jason Zucker and Matt Dumba. They sent Zucker to Nashville. Nashville's getting hot at the right time. They need a player like Jason Zucker. And Arizona said, oh, yeah, we're basically giving you to him for free. Like, he's 90% off. No disrespect to Jason Zucker, wherever you are. And then for Dumba, Tampa Bay got him. Tampa Bay needed a defenseman. They got one in Dumba. And again, for very little cost. The Coyotes are clearly rebuilding. But the fact that they got very late draft picks for two veteran contributors says to me that they didn't get enough value out of their assets at the deadline this year. Well, Will, I have one quick question for you real quick. Is your phone ringing? No, it is not. Yeah, neither is mine, and neither one of the Detroit Red Wings, right? Because they are <laughs> my loser, because the crickets were chirping in Motor City. For some reason, this team didn't make a single move except getting a seventh-round pick and redim, excuse me, redim Simek from the San Jose Sharks. Mm. Not really going to do much there. Listen, Steve Eiserman, their GM, he came out and he expressed confidence in this core with Raymond, Sider, Larkin, and of course Patrick Kane. We can't forget that addition over the summer. Right now, though, if you're Detroit, why not, you know, go for somebody? Maybe why didn't you go out for Vladimir Tarasenko instead of, you know, the Sunshine Cats? You know, it's, it just makes no sense to me. And right now, if this comes back to haunt Steve Eiserman, Detroit fans are going to be upset. Because right now, you have 72 points. You are third in the wildcard race in the East. You have to deal with Tampa, the Islanders, 
the Washington Capitals and maybe New Jersey, but probably not with, you know, their late goalie pickups. But right now, Detroit, if this doesn't work out, oh boy. Who knows? Maybe those teams know something we don't. But whether we agree with these trades or not, how do you guys see this affecting the remainder of the season? What changes do you feel like might stem from some of these decisions, whether they were going for wild cards or playing a little more of the safety cat mindset? Well, let's bring up the tables, right? Mm -hmm. So first thing I want to point out, look on the left-hand side, those central division standings. Right now, yes, the Dallas Stars are leading the pack with 89 points. I think right now, if, especially if you're Dallas, you can ignore Nashville and Minnesota. But on your tail right now, are two fantastic teams, the Winnipeg Jets, who picked up Tyler Toffoli, the Devils leading scorer, and then of course the Colorado Avalanche, you know that's still a stacked ro roster, if not the most stacked roster next to Vegas in the entire league. So Dallas Stars though, with Tanov and Stankonen, I think they're gonna be okay. And honestly, right now, I think they remain in first in the Central. But then you come over to this East Wild Card. I already told you, Detroit's in third at 72 points. Actually, technically tied in the Islanders for the second, both at 72. But you still gotta deal with Tampa Bay, who did pick up Matt Dumba, as you mentioned there, from Arizona. And then Washington and Jersey's down here. This East right now, and especially this being, you know, mostly Two Atlantic teams and three Metro, <laughs> the East is always so, so competitive. Yeah, Arizona, the moves didn't really change anything too much. We knew they were going to rebuild. We knew they weren't going to make any noise this year. But I'll go back to Carolina for a second here. Carolina at 84 points is two back of the New York Rangers. Now, why is that important? Because the NHL playoffs are set up so that in the first two rounds, the team that wins the division gets home ice in the first two rounds. And Carolina is really the only team in that division who can catch the Rangers as we enter the final stretch. The Gensel and Kuznetsov moves signal that Carolina wants to go all in and ensure that the road to the Eastern Conference Finals, at least on the Metro side, runs through Raleigh. Well, as these teams adjust to their new rosters or loss of familiar faces, the NHL enters its last full month of the regular season before the postseason shortly follows. We will also get to see how these trades turn out and see the accuracy you two may have predicted just here today. That's all for Penn State Sports Night. For Chris Machado and Will Dirksen, I'm Bronwyn Leiber. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning into this edition of Penn State Sports Night. For more content like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, give us a like, and follow our socials down below. And as always, we are Penn State Sports Night.